On Monday morning, I hear something outside my door. I thought it was a knock at first, but there was only a single thump. Most people rap at least twice, don't they? Maybe it's just Luke and Donald horsing around. But we're in Wolf Hall. Just in case, I get dressed and go to see whether someone is out there. The least I deserve after the way you treated me! The way I did? I don't owe- He sees me and cuts himself off. This isn't the time. If you would just agree- No. Now please leave. You have no reason to be in this hall. Huh. Sorry. Old history. I am here to let you know that club sign-ups take place this week on Wednesday afternoon in the gym. You don't need to schedule a special day of gym workouts. The sign-ups will be after class. <laughs> I forgot that I got glasses. <laughs> I was not uh, prepared. Whew. Man, they look good. What sort of clubs? Oh, anything. Some groups are traditional and held every year, like the drama club and the choir. Chorale, technically. He says that last word, chorale, but I'm not sure what it means. What's the difference between a choir and a chorale? Uh, I think a choir only sings religious music. I'm not sure, I'm not very musical. Or very religious. I think Ellen's in the chorale. I think. But students can also create their own clubs around any hobby or interest they like. Even a do-nothing club. If you can register enough members, you get official school recognition and the right to access extra equipment. I know V's planning to do something with sports. You could make your own fan club to talk about your life back home. Definitely not. Attracting that kind of attention would make it impossible to keep my secret. Which rules out the drama club as well. Hmm, huh, right, I forgot about that line. Think about it and let me know if you need any help with sign-up forms or posters. I think I'd rather just see what clubs other people are running. I'm here to experience the local culture after all. Uh, uh, local culture after all. <laughs> right. Well then, I've got to get going. He disappears before I can ask if everything's alright with him. Well, what classes should I take this week? Okay, I think I can do whatever I want. We're at stress 16. So we'll do a blue, a black. That'll be like 18, 20. Uh, I think we can get through this week. Actually. I think we can get through this week, and then next week we should do a sleep. We'll try that. Man, making great progress on that black magic. <laughs> I'm not very smart. Okay, so we've done this class before. What am I getting? Silence. Okay, silence is good. Not teleportation, but... Hey, Franco. Question for you. Can you sing? Uh, yeah, I'll say I think I'm okay this time. I think I'm okay. Great! Wanna sign up for Corel? Uh, at the activities things tomorrow. I didn't know Donald could sing. I'd rather look over all the options before making any decisions. Yeah, that's fair. Luke can't carry a tune, so Logan can't either, but his roommate and I are planning a demonstration. Does that mean you've already joined ahead of the sign-ups? Well, no, but... I knew the Corral existed, you know. I heard about the concerts from my brother, so I already planned to join. I guess he really likes music. Well, good luck with your presentation. <laughs> he waves and goes on his way. I may just join you for that, Donald. I kind of have a vague recollection of Ellen being in that, so I'm like, maybe I should join. I should also do more gym, actually, because Ellen does a lot of gym. Oh, boy. This is going to be tough. I need to get teleport. 
Once I get teleport, I can focus more on Jim, too. Barf. Um, well, I can fast forward. Okay, this is new. The Corel might give concerts, too, but at least there I'd only be one of a group. Okay, so... Um, we might be end up joining three clubs. Let's start with sports club. Welcome! Welcome! Come this way to sign up for... Oh. Huh? I already told Donald he can't join. I don't want any of his friends signing up just to sabotage me either. What? That's not what I'm doing. You can't be on my side and on his side. Look, all I want to, is to be on a sports team. Any sports team. Because I'm sporty. I don't want to be stuck with nothing to do all year but kicking a ball around the gym by myself. Yeah, exactly. Look, I'm sorry about... being kind of a bitch before. I'm just so used to Donald trying to wreck everything I do. She offers me her hand. But? I assume buds is a good thing, so I take her hand in agreement. She has a pretty strong grip. Dang, I actually became buds with Virginia. Right, sign here. We're probably meeting on Sundays, but it depends who we get. I'll let you know. I write my name on the form. Well, should I try to join anything else? Uh, yeah. Let's try this. Oh, I forgot Jacob's here. Hey guys. Decided to sign up. Thinking about it. Jacob holds out his hand. Um, oh yeah, right. Franco Franco, right? I'm Jacob Blazing. Pleased to meet you. We exchange a quick, firm handshake. There's no sign that he finds anything unusual about my name or appearance. Good. We're both glasses bros. So how often does Corel meet, and are there any other responsibilities? Rehearsal is every Thursday evening most of the year, with a couple of Saturdays for special sessions. There's a school concert before the winter solstice, and another in April near the end of the year. I believe one year the drama club needed a chorus for their play as well, it depends on what they do. And sometimes there's a school sing-along. I guess maybe we'd vote on whether we want to run one. Sing-along? Community singing, where anyone can attend and take part without having been to rehearsals before. So you in? Sure, because I'm- I can't remember. I- I have a feeling Ellen joins this. Either now or later. Okay. I sign my name to the form. Well, should I try to join anything- join anything else? Joy anything. And study club. Hi, Minnie. Alright, and now we are done. Back to my room I go. <laughs> that was an eventful club sign-up day. Man, I am not good at class. The Iris Academy Corel meets in the gym after dinner on Thursdays. Even at a later, where the overhead lights keep the room inside as bright as day. The room isn't nearly as crowded as it was during initiation, but there are still a good number of people here, including a few that I recognize. Donald and Jacob, of course, but also Virginia's roommate, Ellen, and... Okay, good. Blaze. Oh, good! I love Blaze! Hello, everyone! Welcome to all our new members! If you don't remember me, my name is Blaze Beshley, and I'm choir president. I'll give it a couple more minutes for any stragglers to find their way in. Then I'd like all the new people to come line up at the front. Are we going to have to introduce ourselves again? We mostly do songs on a standard SATB division. That's soprano, alto, tenor, bass. Sometimes a piece needs more voices, and we split that up by seating. So once you find a seat, you should sit there at every rehearsal, 
Unless you run into problems with your part and need to swap. Or you're me. I guess her vocal range would change rather dramatically. She claps her hands. Okay, line up and talk to me. If you know your range, say so. Otherwise, say anything you like so I can hear your voice. I'll tell you where to go. What type of voice do I have, really? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, <laughs> I could do either. Uh, I'm not gonna say. Um, high or low? I'm just wondering if we like sit with certain people. Uh, let's do lower first. Okay, let's do lower first, and then we'll do higher after. Blay sends me and Jacob to sit in the baritone bass section. Okay. So that so I sit with Jacob. I want to do that on Minnie's route. Uh, yes. And if I do higher... Blay sends me and Donald to sit in the tenor section. Okay, I'll, I'll stick with Donald for now. I'll leave Jacob for Minnie's route. After we're all in place, Blay starts passing sheet music around the room. We'll be starting with songs that most of the chorale already knows to ease you in. If you can't read music, listen and try to follow along. There's no tryouts required to be a member, only if you want a solo. No one's getting thrown out for a wrong note. But if you sound like a frog, try to croak quietly, okay? Now, Evan. A large senior from Falcon Hall goes up to the piano on stage to set the pitch and play through each line before we sing them. It's all very or well organized, especially considering that there don't appear to be any teachers involved. Even in America, tradition keeps the wheels turning smoothly. And I've got some good seniors in charge. Blaze is killing it. Go Blaze. Why do I suck at black magic so badly? Hey Franco! Oh, I Hi Virginia, I was not picturing I was not imagining you. I turned to see Virginia. We got the word this morning! Sports club is go! Is go? Go! You know go? She puts her hands together and makes a whooshing motion like a superhero taking off. Shouldn't that be sports club is going? No, it means... It's a slang thing. It means ready to go. Oh. Anyway. So, we've got a bunch of people, mostly wolves and horses, and we've got permission to use the gym and request stuff. So I need everyone who joined up to make a list of what sports they most want to play so I can do a schedule. Write something down and get it to me by Monday, alright? See ya! She bounds away down the hall, no doubt looking for the next person to notify. I guess it'll be a while before we have an actual meeting. Didn't we just play basketball all the time before? I think she was like no bounder. She doesn't want any like magical based sports. I awaken to a knock on the door. Another Saturday morning visitor? The allowances have already been delivered, so it's probably not the mail. Hey, mind if I come in? Uh, sure, enter and be welcome. Is he going to keep doing this all year? Not all year. Is this about taking me to the dungeons? Thank you. Yep, dungeon time. Hi, Barbara. Um, I'll do this one. What's it like down there? She pauses. Empty, mostly. She hurries past me in a way before I can react to her speaking. Well, I guess I'd better go in. I can't believe she actually talked to me. All right. So, I guess we will just 
take a look around. I, uh, I don't have a lot of spells. I do have light. Gotta get used to this interface again. Hello, dummy. Um, what do I have in my spell book? Anything else? Just spirit sense. And silence. Like, I have all these except for silence. Um, alright then. And what does the floor say? <laughs> Horus was here. Alright, well. I guess I can cast Breeze. Inspect the dummy. Only works on inanimate objects, that's right. I guess diagnosis. 15 15 health and 5 5 magic remaining. Only a faint trace of spirit within the plant. No further sentient creatures other than yourself. Okay. I didn't realize it actually. Tells you there's other creatures around, too. That's helpful. Alright, I think I'm good. I have everything I need to pass the first exam. At night I dream of home. I dream of grapevines clinging low to steep slopes and mountains rising from the sea. I dream the scent of the Aleppo pine, warm and bitter and woody, and the cones rolling at my feet. I dream the footsteps of the lost wolves padding through fields, past hay drying in the kozolchi, up and up into a village, disappearing in smoke at an arched front door. I hear the purring song of the dove like a messenger outside my window. A messenger. In the morning, when I wake, the dream still lingers in my mind. I cast a quick spirit sense spell, but there's no sign of anything hanging around. The messenger, if there was one, is gone. The message, however... From one of the drawers beneath the bookshelf, I withdraw a box of copper filigree, a deceptively strong container of metal lacework. I set the box on my table and open it. There's nothing inside. I press my fingertip against the interior surface and trace out a spiral pattern, then close the box. There is a faint pulse of magic. I open the box again, and now it contains a letter. Dear son, of course it is from my parents. Who else would use this method? Who else could? We have not been completely out of touch. I know Gravener speaks with them, and this is certainly not the first time we've been apart. Still, it is nice to hold a message that they sent themselves. They comment on my magical progress so far, ask about the friends and contacts I've made, the usual sorts of things. And because this is a formal letter, they close with a reminder to always uphold the honor of our house and our line. Even in this wild and distant land, I can never truly forget that I am a prince. Right. I gotta move. Oh, I'm stuck. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's better. Our diary. What happened? Um... Club sign-ups, uh, we did that. Musical notes. Donald asked me if I would consider joining the choral with him since Luke can't sing. He said he was planning a demonstration at sign-up day. Now that I think of it, I wonder if he intends some sort of prank. Alright, uh, school club's first choral meeting. I attended the first rehearsal of the choral. Ellen, Donald, Jacob, and Blaze are also members. I joined the tenor section. Uh, sports preparation? Virginia stopped by to ask about what sports I was interested in playing so that she can organize activities for the club. Exam, morning, dungeon training, noblesse oblige. Um, yes, and I read that before too. Okay. Uh, I think we're good. I won't need silence for the first exam, so... We'll just leave that alone. You guys stressing about exams? Um, I won't get them more information because I want to 
have William still be happy enough with me to get me to help him with his scheme later. So next time. Um, okay. And sleep, I guess? No, my stress isn't too bad. Let's do... You know what? Let's just do this in the hopes that we get, like, another spell and then next week we'll sleep. I can hope. Ah, uh, finally, something. Now, my little scribes, you should recall that I told you black magic is the magic of solidity and permanence. Life and spirit are chaotic and ever-changing by their nature. Force and illusion might come and go in an instant. Nothing truly lasts forever. Even our world and its magic will someday wither to dust. But that day is not today. And with black magic, we affix things that will last a good long time. Within an object, you can leave an enduring mark upon the world. A message for the future. You may also find it useful to mark your way through a labyrinth. If you can trust the walls not to move... Inscription. What a useful spell for the exam. <laughs> Hooray! I did it. This isn't the exam I want to fail, right? There's an exam I want to fail at some point. Uh... No, that's later. Okay. <laughs> I can pass the first one. Uh, an extra review session, eh? Um, yes, because Ellen's going to be there. Uh, should I... Let's see. Alright, we'll start here. Nervous freshmen are crammed in cheek to cheek, whispering vague guesses about how tomorrow's exam process will work. From what I can hear, most don't even suspect the dungeons will be involved. I'm far ahead in terms of planning. I probably shouldn't even be here. I'm taking up space, and there's not much to go around. But before I can manage to squeeze out, Gravener makes his appearance. Open your notebooks if you have them. This is not a quiz. This is for your own benefit. If you do not know the answer, look it up or ask someone. He opens up his own book as if to demonstrate. If you have paid any attention to your schoolwork up to this point. He has a high opinion of his students, doesn't he? You should have a basic conceptual understanding of the pentachromatic system and its divisions. Including a broad range of uses for magic and the scope represented by each of the color categories. Mr. Arius. A head snaps up. Yes, sir. It's a kid from Toad Hall. Probably some kind of werewolf from the ears and tail. If I wish to cast a spell to make a beast fur fall out, what color of magic would I use? G green sir? I should hope that you would know that much without the need to ask for my approval. Miss Middleton, what color of magic would you use to transform a lump of coal into a diamond? Well, it seems like there should be multiple approaches. Choose one. Red, sir? And how do you intend to accomplish this change by the application of force? Well, diamond and coal are both made from carbon, and scientists can synthesize diamonds in laboratories. So if you applied sufficient heat and pressure... That's enough! Huh? Miss Middleton, your method may not be impossible, but it is dangerously impractical. Attempting to summon that level of energy would melt the flesh from your bones. Oh. Can Americans really turn coal into diamonds without magic? Before I can think too long about that one, he has turned his gaze upon me. Mr. Franco, what color of ma- I mean, Mr. Franco- what color of magic might you use to send a message to a fellow classmate? I can feel people looking at me. Am I expected to show off or to play dumb? What color should I pick? I picked white last time. I'm gonna... 
Just for funsies. Message in a bottle. Um, I learned about inscription, so can you use black? Black. Explain. Isn't it obvious? I can use black magic to write my message on an object or the ground. That does not address the sending aspect. Oh. <laughs> that was fine. I'll take that. He continues in this vein, putting individual students on the spot to answer questions about the applications of each color of magic. Okay, I think this is the same, and then I got smart. I actually learned a thing at school. Good. All right. Dungeon time? Dungeon time. Um, all right, we'll begin. You are now in dungeon level one, layout 2A. I can't see anyone here, and the voice doesn't sound like one of the professors, but logically it must be their projection. The exit to this dungeon lies beyond the darkness in front of you. You must use magic in order to escape. Good luck. I wait a moment, but that appears to be the final instruction. Still, I knew this was coming, so it's not much of a surprise. Now it's up to me to find my way out. Indeed. Well, light. And examine the floor. <laughs> Needs more skulls. Sure, man. So dark in here. Goodness gracious me. Need some lights. Casting all these darkness spells. Well, that's a suspicious looking door. And... Go back. This is not the way. And they're right. It's not the way. I need green magic for that, I think. I can diagnose it, but I shouldn't actually climb it. So I do breeze again. It's blowing up. All right. So if I examine the wall, it's made of stone. There are two strange vertical cracks running all the way down the walls that the stones don't quite connect to each other, but the wall feels solid. It looks like an ordinary stone floor, though a bit dirty. You can't see any more details with just your eyes. Okay, inspect the floor. There appears to be a trigger mechanism hidden in the floor which connects to the east wall and a tiny button to trigger it. And if I, whoops, inspect the wall. This wall contains a secret door. It's designed to slide away. It seems to be connected to something in the floor. Okay. Um, examine floor button. There we go. And voila. I make my way up to the surface, blinking a bit of the sunlight. Congratulations, Franco! For succeeding in your quest, you receive five merits. I hope you enjoyed putting your skills into practice. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have another student to look after. Well, that's done. Hooray. And you guys did well as well. <laughs> um... So what happened? So I relax. Someone knocks on my door. When I stick my head outside, at first I don't see anyone there. After a moment, I spot William down the hall talking to Luke. Oh, right. This is about going out to celebrate our first dungeon. Okay. So I could go to the mall to do that. Or... Um, I am stressed... But I don't have enough money yet. 
I think I'll just study today. Oh, I can't skip. I make my way to the Iris Academy Library. Other than the librarian, there aren't very many people in here on a Saturday, so it's quite easy to spot. Hi, Franco! Um, hi. So, did you manage to get enough people to sign up for your club? To get official recognition? Oh, no. Not very many people wanted to be... Well, study club doesn't sound very exciting, I suppose. Thank you for your support, even if it wasn't enough to make the difference. Really? How come it worked last time? Yeah, this is different. How intriguing. But that's alright. What matters is that people know I'm here so they can get support when they need it. So is there anything I can help you with? Oh no, I'm scheming again. <laughs> no, I schemed. Is she really that enthusiastic about schoolwork? What does she get out of this? Hmm. Ask her to go somewhere else with you? Pardon? I'm filing that away for later. Wouldn't you like to go somewhere else with me, winker winker? Um, let's study. Sure. Minnie and I discuss the principles of green magic. Smart and green magic increased by one, stress increases by four. Grand. I'm so stressed out, I need to sleep. On Sunday, the sports club gathers in the gym for their first meeting. It looks like the members are mostly horses and wolves. Donald and Luke aren't here, of course, but I see Jamal and Mikey, who share the next room down from them, and several older wolf boys. That senior from Toad Hall is here, too. Maybe his mushroom adventure club didn't work out. There's a teacher sitting on the stage, an athletic-looking woman wearing a feathered ca cape. I was gonna say cap. When she raises a hand to brush back her hair, I notice that her fingers are clawed. She must be a lechuza, an owl witch. Is she the gym teacher? Virginia steps up and claps her hands. Hey everybody! Welcome to Sports Club! I've counted up all the surveys people handed in. Well, actually, Ellen did the counting. Her roommate looks up for a moment, then hunches her shoulders, trying not to draw attention to herself. And it looks like soccer is the all-around winner, so that's what we'll be playing most weeks. Not every time, but if we want to work on our skills, we need to try out different positions in teams and learn how everyone plays. This is our first time, so don't worry about it being balanced. Just have fun. Professor Von Brun, did you want to add anything? What? No! No, you're doing fine! Carry on! She looks away, twisting a bit of her jewelry back and forth. Right. Now let's get out there and show that we don't need magic to kick some butt. We split up into two sides. Some of the born witches haven't played football before, so we quickly go over the rules. The game is going well until... Oh. What did I hit you? Oh no! The ball I kicked slammed into the side of a girl's head. Al? <laughs> why, why do you get hit and they're, like, questioning that hurt? I look up to see if the professor will step in, but she's nowhere to be seen. She must have left the gym while we were playing. Are you okay? I'm fine. It's my fault. I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. Maybe you should sit down for a minute. Well, at least she's being a good sport about it. Still, the middle of a game is no time to get distracted. I can't believe I kicked my love in the head with a ball. As I'm coming back to my room on Sunday afternoon, I hear a loud burst of laughter from inside Donald and Luke's room. Do I want to know what's going on in there? 
Not this time. Next time. They're probably plotting another of Donald's pranks. I'd rather not be involved. This time. Alright, let's read all about it. Um, okay, so... Okay, I've read those before. I read that before. I read that before. Um... I ignored the invitation. Helpful Minnie. Minnie Cochran is running Saturday study sessions in the library. She helped me out with some of my classwork. Intro to football. The sports club had our first official meeting and it was declared that soccer would be our main sport. I accidentally hit Ellen in the head with a ball when her attention wandered, but she wasn't upset about it. And no comment. Alright, and that was our week. Sorry, Ellen. Aw, oh, poor girl. 